And I am waiting on notifications, sir. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast. We have an amazing guest with us this afternoon, one who I'm very humbled uh, would take time out of your busy schedule to come give us some information as well as some inspiration. And that is our brother, Harold Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And my sister Miriam says the sends the greetings well, as well. Sister yes, Miriam. Greetings to sister Miriam, please. Yes, sir. Now, Brother Harold, the first thing that we want to address is something that is uh, affecting the black community, what men in you know all over, but especially in our community, and that's prostate cancer. Um how how did you find out that you had it and how did you um overcome it? Well, how I found out if I had prostate cancer, I was trying to get some uh, more life insurance. And I had to go and get a checkup mm. in order to receive this life insurance. When I went and got the checkup, they told me that they could not give me the life insurance due to the fact that I would have to be referred somewhere else. I didn't understand why. So when they sent me that letter, it said something pertaining about, it didn't say prostate, but it said that I had a, a situation that I need to, to, to get cleared up. So what I did was I went to my, my primary doctor and they diagnosed me with prostate cancer. I wouldn't have never known if that uh, actual, how do you say, uh, if I wasn't trying to get life insurance, I would have never known that. I had no side effects, no pain, no, no discomfort, nothing at all. And basically that's how I found out. Yes, sir. Well, I'm, I'm grateful uh, that God brought you through, sir. Um, what, what, was that, um, what was that like having that conversation with your family and friends, letting them know when you first found out? Well, I uh, I wasn't married at the time. And my mom was, was living. I had brought her down to North Carolina because I'm, I'm originally from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And when I received the phone call, what it was like, it was like it was devastating. And my mom, you know, oh Lord, God, this and that. And I was calm. But I basically was in disbelief, couldn't believe it. Me? Cancer? Oh, you know, so so many things going through my head, but you know, the first thing you think of, man, am I gonna die? You know? Yes, sir. I didn't think that. I said, man, I, I just can't believe it. Maybe, maybe I might need to get another diagnosis. That was the first thing I thought of. And then, you know, of course, you go through the procedure, went to the doctors, told me, yeah, you have it. And, you know, where, where we go from here? What am I, what, what are you going to do? And I had so many options, but I had no one that really talked to to tell me what I could do. Prayed on it. And then I said, okay, I'll just have surgery. And that's how that went. As we saw that. And once you got once you got out of surgery, how how um um how did you feel? Did you feel better or like how was that coming coming out out of surgery? When I, when I came out of surgery, before, well, I'm gonna tell you before I went into surgery, I had this kind of thought, like Donald Mrs. Farrakhan said, you know, if Allah wanted to take me right then and there, hey, if that's His will. That's his will. I was I was ready, but then I said, all these all these damn final call newspapers I've sold over my <laughs> years in the nation. I know I uh uh I know I'm not going anywhere. There's a whole lot more for me to do. 
that was my first thing. So, but you know, that's how it was for me. As many final calls as I've sold over the years, I know I ain't going nowhere. You know, so I had no pain. Everything was good. Came out of the surgery fine, and was just really ready to get back to work. You know. Okay. Praise be to Allah. What yes. advice? What advice would you give to others who may be um, dealing with uh, prostate issues, or others who may be dealing with cancer issues? What I would tell them is to continue to keep their faith in Allah first. What's going to be going to be anyway. If you keep your faith and read up on it, check up on it, make sure you're well educated in what you're about to do as far as surgery or her herbs or any other things in that nature, you know? And if, if they feel good about making their decision, just talk to someone that probably went down that road. I didn't have anybody to talk to who went down that road, you know? And, and oh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I did, uh, I did write a letter to the minister, but you know, the minister, he's, he's so busy yes, sir, and, yes, sir, I, yes, sir. and he got so much on his plate. So I, like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, just seek refuge in Allah. Seek refuge in Allah and pray on it and you get an answer. That was in 2012, here it is 20, 20 going on 2021. So, Allahu Akbar. Akbar. And also, too, um, we recently just came back from Savior's Day. They said that my PSA was slowly but slightly rising again. So that was telling them that I still had some cancer cells within my body. Mm. So they suggested I take radiation treatments. I talked to the wife and we, uh, we prayed on it. I wrote another letter to the uh, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Regional Captain Brother Aaron told me, Brother Harold, this is what you need to do right to the minister. And you know, I love Brother Regional Captain Brother Ann. Yes, sir. That's my man. So I wrote to the minister. And knowing that the minister has a, a very heavy schedule, I seek refuge in Allah. We agreed to have the radiation treatments. So when we came back from Savings Day 2020, the first day, Back, that was a Monday. I had scheduled to have 38 radiation treatments. So I went, wound up going seven weeks and three days from Monday to Friday. Radiation treatment. Never stopped soldiering. Never stopped pushing the final call newspaper. They told me that I would probably have fatigue. Diarrhea, urgent having to, to urinate because of the treatment. The wife made me bean soup every single day. Mm -hmm. That bean soup every single day with cream of wheat bread and a salad. Mm -hmm. The only side effect that I had was frequent wanting to go urinate. That was it. I was on that block every Saturday, didn't miss a Saturday, rocked every Saturday. Thank I'm talking you. about, I'm, I'm getting $500, $500 days, Brother Joshua, on the yes, block. Sir, yes, sir. $500 plus days on the block, never, never missed. Went to work six days, 12 hours a day, every day, except for Sunday. Never stop pushing, never stop driving. I was at work. I worked for the United States Postal Service as well. 
That's a governor. I was in the belly of the governor and still kept pushing final calls, oils, incense, and bean pot. All the while, there's treatment. You know, I'm an FOI every day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All day long. And I come in the name of the law and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You know, I'm I'm gonna do that. So that's what that's how I went through my radiation treatments after Savings Day 2020. That was on my plate. Never missed a day on Saturday. Praise me so a lot. Now, what is the underlying uh force that is moving you and driving you to keep going like that in under in during these type of circumstances? The underlying force was the belief and faith that I have in Allah and these teachings. Minister Farrakhan is the greatest example because look what this man has done. Prostate cancer, two meniscus tears, and then prostate uh, rising again. And they put all those radiation seeds in and tried to kill our, our, our minister. Yes, sir, That's yes, what drives me. You know, there's no excuse. If the minister can push in the man in the way he pushes, then hey, I'm a push too, because I love the minister. I love the teacher. I never met him. I never met him. That would be like the greatest gift if I ever did. But that's my driving force. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and what he does for us. So man, come on. I got to I got to push. I got to drive, just like the minister. That's that's my example. Yes, sir. Well, what what has been your greatest joy in your time in the Nation of Islam, sir? My greatest joy. Good question. The brotherhood. That's my greatest joy. I've met so many brothers around the nation of Islam that have pushed me, who, who have driven me to do the things that I do. Because so I like one time, you know, things were impossible. To, it's impossible to do this. And they've made it so easy. And if, if I may, there's, a, there's several names that I would like to go. My brother, brother Alfred Muhammad, he's our student secretary here in Greensboro. Mm. They call us uh, uh, Scotty Pippen. He's Scotty Pippen. I'm Michael Jordan. Y'all know who y'all already know who Jordan is, right? Y'all know who Jordan is. <laughs> brother Alfred, that's my man. Mm. And like brother Mark A. Muhammad, who's down in Atlanta right now which uh, he uh, came from Durham. He drives me because he pushes the final call and he loves the final call and he loves the ministry. Brother Troy Muhammad, my first officer, motivates me and continues to keep me motivated. And I love that brother. The whole bunch of brothers, man. I, I would be remiss, man, Minister Asim Razak, my local minister here. It, the first time I was invited to a local mosque meeting, I heard him speak. That Monday, I came back to orientation class. I've been pushing ever since. And then, of course, first my, my first uh, captain in the nation of Islam is Brother John F. Muhammad. Uh, a mover of men. And at the time when the nation was, you know, we didn't care nothing about your feelings. Brother John was one of them captains. He, he just pushed you. Didn't care nothing about your feelings. Didn't, didn't care how you felt. Push this word. Yes, sir. Keep dry. Who else, man? There's just so many brothers. Brother Layton from, from DC. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, Brother Kadir, our regional minister here in the Middle Atlantic. First time I ever uh, went to a mosque meeting other than here in Greensboro, when I was living in New Jersey, I went to Mosque 25 and Brother Kadir was there. I, ain't, I didn't even know he was a minister. Mm -hmm. Didn't even know who he was. And when he came out and started rocking the way he was rocking, I said, oh, God, who, who, who is this man? Because I met him at the gym uh, in Maplewood, New Jersey. 
at the time I was like 197, 18 and a half inch arms. I was, you know, I was out there pushing it like Brother Saad in, uh, in, in Charlotte. I was training like that. And I met Brother, uh, Brother Kadir. Who else, man? It, there's just so many, so many brothers that have motivated me. Brother, uh, I got to say Brother Andrew from Baltimore. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Andrew from Baltimore, man, I love his spirit. In fact, I seen the podcast that you did with him. And I, I just listened to the whole thing. Brother Bashir from Los Angeles. Met him one time. I call this brother almost every day. Mm, mm, mm. Ellie, another brother that just keeps my, my juices flowing, you know? So there's just so many brothers. And I, and I would be remiss, man. And I apologize if it's brothers that I, I did miss. Maybe during, during the time in this podcast, I, I remember and bring up the names. Yes, sir. Brother D. Shane says, that's right. My sister Miriam says, all praises due to Allah. My next question for you, sir, is... Joshua, you know, brother, and brother D. Shane as well. Another brother. He's so humble. I'm trying and I'm striving for humility. And when I talk to that brother and I see him, He's so humble, man. That's one of the other brothers that I, I forgot to say. Brother DeShane, very humble brother. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. You spoke earlier about your wife uh, cooking for you during um, your, your recovery. Yes, and yes. what advice would you give to future husbands? Make sure that she has your side of her. And she believes and trusts in her. In fact, my wife is from St. Louis, Mass number 28. I seen her one time doing Saving Day in Chicago. And I said, I'm married. Brother introduced me, well, didn't introduce, but he was at a uh, single retreat. And I asked him about, his name is Brother Albert out in Vegas. And he said to me, yeah, brother, she's a good sister. Good sister. So I talked to my sister who's down there in uh, Atlanta with y'all, Sister Courtney. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Sister Courtney, man, who was that sister? I want to get to meet her. So Sister Courtney got in touch with him. And Sister said she was not interested in, in courtship. Or wasn't available at the time in courtship. I said, OK. Thing kind of hurt me, man. You know, I got pride. You know, ex-athlete, okay, take no no for an answer. Saw her again in Tuskegee, Alabama at the Holy Day of Atonement. She was coming through the hotel. I looked at her. She didn't recognize or remember. I jumped on the elevator with her and all the other MGT from St. Louis. No shame in the brother's game. I said, sister, are you ready? To go into, are you available now is what I asked. Are you available now? Sister said, no, sir. I said, well, do you remember me? Yes, sir, but I'm not available. I said, yes, ma'am. I went back downstairs. I said, well, hey, that's it. I ain't asking no more. Watched the football game and Brother Alfred and I went to eat pizza. I'm a big pizza eater, y'all. Yes, sir. That morning, when we were all leaving, that Monday morning, we were all leaving, sister came up to me and said, brother, my name is Sister Vernita. I am available. If you're still interested. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, couldn't get, I couldn't get back to Greensboro fast enough, man, to tell my local uh, captain, brother George Muhammad, that I want to go into courtship with this sister. But the brother that I was with that particular day. I told him, I said, brother, I'm going to get married before you. <laughs> brother mm -hmm. said, why are you saying that? I said, man, I'm going to get married before you. And uh, Allah blessed us. We've been married for six years, six strong years. Yeah, you know? yeah. She an she, she alpha, alpha female. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good thing for me. Crazy. So what was it about her that made you be so persistent? First of all, she was an MGT. That's number one. You don't have one get one. That's number one. Number two, why I was so persistent, man, is because there was just something about her. 
her that I was very attracted to, but I could see her strength just by the way she walked into the, the uh, hotel that day. She was leading the pack. And I said, just something about her. And when I seen her in Chicago before I seen her again in Tuskegee, it was just, just a fit attraction. I thought she was beautiful. And I, I still think she's the most beautiful woman I ever met. You know? Praise be to Allah. How, what, what is it about the Final Call newspaper that keeps you selling, selling them so consistently? Because I see you on Facebook I mean, you you're ba you basically out there every week for years. Like ever since I've been Facebook friends with you, I see you selling the paper. What is it that keeps motivating you to do so? What keeps me motivated is I heard the minister, Minister Farrakhan, say. He said, uh, "What is it that, and why is it that we can't deliver the paper to our people? It's not it's it's it's, it's not hard to do. Just go out there." and just deliver that word. But what motivates me so much is that if the minister can go from country to country, pushing that word of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he has an awesome work, you mean to tell me <laughs> that we can't deliver a paper on the block or, or door to door in your own city? or anywhere else that you sold it. So if the minister is consistent in what he does and resilient in this word and these teachings, we should be able to do the same with this word if we believe in the minister and these teachings. That is our way of devotion. And that's how we're going to resurrect the dead. And all it is is with the final call news. I heard Supreme Captain say, man, in, in Villava, if, was it Sevillava, the word he used was it makes you want to go out there and push it. Villifies you. I know I'm saying it wrong, but it's a great feeling, man, after you go out and come back and you sold out. And uh, it doesn't hurt when you got about four or $500 in your pocket either. And then there's a word that you can give a person that says to you, and they say it to me all the time, Brother Harold, man, what's a good word, man? Give me a good word for the day. And I'll say something like, well, except you want to be yourself. <laughs> Go out there and do what you do, man, but do it in a righteous manner. You know, anything because of the love that they have for us. And I know they're looking for us every week. And being that they're looking for us every week, man, that's what drives me to go and push no matter if it's raining, uh, snowing, hot. Oh, I done passed out before on the block, 90 mm -hmm. plus degree heat, you know, got dehydrated. My wife waited for me to go to the store to get, after I finished soldiering, to, to bring water home. I'm in the hospital. <laughs> I'm going to go get water, which I'm supposed to have in me, and I'm passed out on the block. And the people came to my aid. Mm -hmm. One of my brothers, Brother Marcus X, passed out on the block, man. If it wasn't for him to come up there, I probably would still be laying out there in the street now. Mm -hmm. That's what drives me, man, pushes me. I mean, I don't advise anybody to do this, you know. So, but yeah, I love selling the final call. I love engaging with the people, you know, I love it. Praise be to Allah. Well, I have a quick 60-second um, commercial break that I want to make sure I acknowledge all of the sponsors of this month's podcast. Um, thank you all for your continued sponsorship. Uh, we're starting with one second, Brother Harold. We're starting with, uh, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. We're starting with, that's Cash Cash App, the People's Podcast, Dollar Sign, the People's Podcast, all one word. My brother, Rashad Muhammad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and drone. They, uh, him and his partner working on television, uh, editing, film editing, and they're working on a big project right now. 
my sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me, Children's and Color, uh, Children's Book and Coloring Book, both of which are on Amazon. Thank you very much, Sister Miriam. Please get your copy. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country. Thank you very much. Um, Supreme Men's uh, Urban, Men and Boys Urban Wear out of St. Louis, Missouri. Reach out to our brother. He will keep you uh, dressed, dripping with some good fashion. Raising Black Millionaires, Sister Tia Muhammad. She does an amazing job of economic um, empowerment through flashcards to young children. Thank you very much, Sister Tia Muhammad. Brother Kenneth Muhammad, bow tie maker extraordinaire. He will ship his bow ties to you all across the country. Thank you very much, Brother Kenneth. Um, Brother Todd X McGraw, Supreme Team Insurance Group. If you need some insurance, he will look out for you. Coming right back to you, Brother Harold. Yes, Brother yes. Chantil X, the X and Express. Um, he hires truck drivers as well as specializing in refrigeration all across the country. Thank you very much, Brother Chantil. Brother Jabbar Muhammad, Client First uh, Construction Incorporated. Painting, carpentry, flooring, plumbing, et cetera. Reach out to Brother Jabbar if you're in the Chicago area or in the Memphis, Tennessee area for your needs. Thank you very much. Um, sister Landre El Mohammed, Navy Beans, More Than Bean Pies. Let's reach out and support our sister. Thank you very much. Dr. Henry M. Carter, King Henry's Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Service in Chicago area. And last but not least, I'm coming right back to you, Brother um, Harold. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdulsharif.com, and my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are on Amazon. Thank you all for your support and donations to the People's Podcast. Okay, yes, sir. Now, um, how did your parents feel about you accepting the teachings, Brother Harold? Well, uh, my dad passed away when I was eight years old. Mm. But I did used to hear him say, Assalamu a lot. Mm. I was little. Bit. My mom, may Allah be pleased with her, is a avid Christian woman. My brother and I, we came up in the Baptist church. By the way, I'm I'm a twin. Okay, okay. So we came up into the Baptist church. We sang in the choir the whole night. So my mom, she wasn't all of that. She wasn't all that happy about it, but I mean, I was, I was doing good things, and she seen the good things that I was doing and the people that I was uh, uh, attracting, good people. And my brother, brother Alfred, brother Minister, she met some of them mm. and seen that they were very respectful men. Brother Troy, very respectful men in in, in our, our city of Greensburg. So, you know, she really didn't say, she just kept asking me, do I believe in Jesus Christ? And I kept saying, Ma, of course I do. Do believe in Jesus Christ. Mr. Farrakhan teaches us that a good Christian is a good Muslim. And a good Muslim is a good Christian. So, you know, yes, we believe in Jesus Christ. You know, all I'm trying to do is just resurrect our people mentally enough. That's all I'm trying to do. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, what do you do for fun, uh, Brother Hill? Oh, man. So the final call, brother. <laughs> you know? But, um, yeah, basically, you know, like I said, I, I'm working six days, 12 hours a day. So, man, you know, I go out there and I push that paper. I love that. I wasn't, I, I was at one time an athlete too, Brother uh, Joshua. Yes, sir. What what uh what 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 sports did you play? I was a uh, running back in high school and okay. a swimmer. Mm. I was a first team all county and first team all conference selection at running back. Okay. And, and as a sprinter in high school, I was a county champion of sixty, North Hudson champion one hundred and two twenty, county champion one hundred and two twenty. State sectional champ in the 100 and 220. Went to the University of Tennessee on a track scholarship. Ran the 100 at the at the time. Uh, I was a 9.8 uh, sprinter. Okay, okay. 20, 21 7 in the 220. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the monster race that I didn't like running, but 
you got a customer to run it in that quarter. You run the quarter, you were made in Jersey. And I wound up running 48.8 in that. Mm. I could run, brother. I can run. I used to tell the brothers uh, when I was in high, in high school, don't run, don't run for me. Because if you do, I'm a catch. <laughs> yes. Back in the day. I can roll, man. In fact, they used to have an Atlanta track class, which was uh, one of the pres most prestigious track meets in the country. In my senior year, I got invited to go down there to run the 220, but I had pulled a hamstring. So I just went anyway because it was my senior year, but I didn't get to compete. But my coach wanted to bring me in. So I was a bad boy. I, could, I, I ran that hunch. I know the, um, Mr. Farrakhan said he ran the 100 yard dash too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 10 Crazy. flat sprinter. 10 flat is move. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, so the minister was, he was fast, y'all. I wanted to run nine, eight. I, some, some stopwatches had me at nine, seven. They wouldn't, they didn't give it to me, you know. But uh, yeah, I ran track and played football. Yes, sir. What type of music do you listen to? I like all music. Of course, you know, I, I see what you like, Brother Joshua. <laughs> you versatile, brother. Yes, sir. But uh, I like uh, I like some I like some hip hop. Mm -hmm. Love R and B. Okay, okay. You know, don't laugh at me. Because I was down at Tennessee for about two and a half three years. I ain't gonna lie, I like country music too. I like country music, and I'm wrong with country music. I like country music. <laughs> I told you I was versatile like you. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I told you know others out there listening, I like country, I do like country music as well. It relaxes me. You yes, know, sir. but I do listen to some 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 hip hop, especially when I come back from the block after having a good day. I'll be listening to Tupac and I'll be listening to Biggie, you yes, know. Sir, yes, sir. It spurs me on, man, makes me feel good after I had it. A Farrakhan day out there on the block. I got I got to mention one other brother, if it's okay. Yes, sir. Brother Quincy Muhammad up there in Raleigh. He and I go back and forth because he out there from Monday to to, to Saturday, from Monday to Sunday sometimes, and he pushes and drives and motivates me too. So, brother Quincy, I want to thank you too, brother, for being an inspiration to me as well. You know, I don't, I don't want you to think I forgot you. But I did, man. So and that, that brother, he 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 good, he a hard worker as well. Praise be to Allah. Well, I want to thank you, Brother Harold, and thank your family for, for their sacrifice as well. Thank you for your sacrifice. Um, because your um example is always good, especially social media. I, I see you, I see the work that you're putting in, I know many others do, and it reminds us of the driving force of the nation um with the final call newspaper and being represented, and it puts pressure on us. To remind to be reminded of our first duty. So I appreciate you for your hard work, sir, for being steadfast. I really do. Yes, sir. What what would you like your legacy to be, bro? My legacy? Yes, sir. I would like for my legacy to be that I worked hard and I came from I mean, I'm a foot soldier, you know. So I have no other uh, people in my family in the nation of Islam. I am the only brother in the nation of Islam in my whole family. So my, my, my legacy, I would like for them to just know and brothers who know me and sisters who know that I was a hard worker, no nonsense, push and drove and would not want to do anything that I wouldn't want anybody else to do in, the, in our nation. And just continue to just be steadfast in what I do. And that's just to continue to push, drive, motivate, and just continue to just meet as many people who love Islam and the nation, the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the love the Honorable Minister Lewis Park. If you don't love the minister, then you don't love me. You know, I want my legacy to be known that I'm a, I'm a Farrakhan man. I'm a Farrakhan knight, you yes, know? Sir, yes, sir. I want people to know that I love this work. 
And then anytime you have the regional captain, Brother Aaron, breathing down your neck, calling you out every Monday night on the FOI calls. Brother Harold on the line, that right there. Brother Harold, where at, where at, brother? You, you, did you get bumped off? Stuff like that. That is what drives me to keep me motivated, to keep me pushing where I want my legacy to say, well, the brother never quit. Even through the adversity that I went through, because yo man, like I said, this, this, this is what we do. We are for why. We the baddest that has ever been. And I want to be recognized and known as one of the baddest that, that has ever been that believe in these teachings and know that, hey, it works. Because when my wife was feeding me all that bean soup, man, trust me, I know. And I didn't have no side effects. These teachings are real. This is the truth. And then to still go out there and push and drive. And like I said, when you're an ex-athlete, man, you, you believe in righteous competition. So you know I'm going to drive every time I get a chance. My wife says to me a lot, it ain't always about you. I said, baby, well, if it ain't about me, then who is it about? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it's about me today. But I understand. That's why I say I, I got to make sure I talk to brothers and stay with brothers who are humble, like Brother Alfred, like Brother Lamar in our city. Who else? There's a lot of brothers who are very humble. And I just have to work on that. That's what I want my legacy to be, man. Push, drive, and keep on driving and keep on pushing. That's what I want. Praise be to Allah. Well, I want to thank you very much, sir, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the People's Podcast. We're going to put this on YouTube. We want you to please like, share, subscribe. May Allah continue to bless you and your family and continue to inspire us, uh, sir. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you having me come on your show, Brother Joshua. And it's outstanding and great work that you're doing. And I believe in that, man, there's a whole lot of brothers that I know who want to come on your podcast. Praise be so loud. Well, please keep me up, sir, and I look forward to it. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, sir. Thank you.